Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of WVU Energy Express on West Virginia Public Broadcasting and on YouTube. I am not Zach Harold. My name is Maddie Bowers and I'm a graduate assistant here at WVU Extension in Nap Hall in Morgantown, West Virginia. Now I'm filling in for Zach Harold today because we are talking about all things WVU and who would be better to talk about WVU than a WVU student herself? So. I'm going to take the reins today, but I'm feeling a little bit like something's not right about my hosting. Do you know if I'm missing anything? Oh, I know what I'm missing. That's right. I needed a Hawaiian shirt if I'm going to be a host of Energy Express. But with that, we are going to hop straight into our first segment today, which is all about something really special here at WVU. For our first segment today, we are going to be talking about the Personal Rapid Transit System, otherwise known as the PRT for short. Now, the PRT is an on-demand monorail system that takes students around campus. That might be something that you're already familiar with. But did you know that there's so much more that goes into making each of the 69 individual PRT cars run so students can get to and from classes effectively and efficiently? We're going to head over to PRT Central Control to learn more about what makes the PRTs work. Let's head over there now. Come, take a ride of the future. The PRT system. Take a ride of the future. PRT, Personal Rapid Transit, an alternative in urban transportation. Gate 5 will be boarding for an PRT is at work here in its first practical application at Morgantown, West Virginia. The PRT is called personal because the cars are small for a single passenger to drive alone non-stop to the destination he selected. Hi, welcome to the PRT. Come on in. My name is Jeremy Evans, and I am the Director of Transportation. Behind me here, you see PRT Central Control. Within PRT Central Control, we have three primary operating stations. The guy that you see on the right there, in front of the two computer monitors, he is the person that's actually monitoring the PRT and looking for any kind of issues with PRT vehicles, and then he would interact with the system and uh, resolve those issues. The guy in the middle is watching cameras to see what's going on out in the system and he's actually logging everything that happens in the system so then we can have a, a reference point to go back to. And then the guy on the far left, he is watching cameras but he also is the communications person who speaks to uh, PRT vehicles and he also communicates with people at PRT stations. So this is the PRT primary maintenance facility. Within this facility, we have two high uh, PRT vehicle lifts, and we have one smaller lift over here that doesn't go quite as high. The two lifts back here are used for primarily vehicle maintenance and repair mechanically, and the front lift there is used for a lot of our electronics repairs. Um, every PRT vehicle gets maintained in some way every 3,000 miles. So every time the vehicle hits 3,000 miles, it comes to the shop and gets uh, some sort of repair. Um, we have 69 PRT vehicles. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of work that our uh, maintenance staff has to do. You know, we have our main, main guideway where passengers ride. And then we also have this area here, which is uh, basically our TL, our test loop, to where we bring vehicles down if they, have, if they need repairs or if they need to come in for scheduled maintenance. Uh, we basically, the uh, central control folks can, uh, can steer vehicles down into this area and then it's basically like one big loop so the vehicles will come in and either they, they bypass the garage and they can be worked on outside or for more major repairs they come into the garage and we have a couple different lanes and as behind me you see this vehicle here, uh, this is one of the last stages where a vehicle, you know, once some repairs are made they come here, get checked out electronically, you know, for controls issues or troubleshooting. Uh, we actually can hook it up to power here and run it, run it through a test sequence, make sure everything works good. And once we put it down, it goes back onto the guideway here. We have one entry point here and an exit point on the other side of the garage. So it's just like a 
revolving door of, of, of vehicles for repair. PRTs are built on a 1972, 70, 72 uh, uh, Dodge truck chassis. Uh, that's the, the main frame. And that was sort of the foundation based on the weight of the vehicle and all that stuff. And, and then uh, at Boeing, when they uh, designed it, they designed everything around that with dimensions and everything. And uh, sort of a handful of aircraft, mix of aircraft parts and vehicle parts and uh, things from, I mean, we had, what is it, the uh, hydraulic pump that we used to, to control a lot of the function of the vehicle. It came out of a, uh, a, a Vietnam era helicopter, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> and some things we can't, some parts we can't get it anymore. So we've had to have them remanufactured or we've had to do the research to find a, a modern part that, that has, it has the equivalent, equivalent functionality of, of the old parts. So. There are quick fixes we can do where we can have them have a vehicle in and out in an hour or two. Uh, and then for our more major teardowns for scheduled maintenance, uh, a vehicle may be on a lift for a better part of a week. Uh, it just depends on where that vehicle is in its maintenance cycle and how, uh, how large the repairs are. But uh, fortunately, we, you know, uh, we don't have too many uh, breakages that are, that are catastrophic or anything of that nature. So most of the, most of the long-term repairs are scheduled maintenance where we tear it down, replace parts, check parts, do our um, tolerance inspections, and uh, put it back together and test it and send it on its way. Yeah, and it's pretty neat too with the, the fact that these guys that, that actually perform the work. I mean, you, you take your, you know, you take a good mechanic in any of your repair shops for, for your cars and then turn that up a notch and that's that's the quality of our, our mechanics. They, they deal with they have to be very regimented and, and they deal with, um, you know, a, a lot of different issues that maybe a, a normal auto mechanic doesn't have to deal with. So it's, it's pretty cool. Tell you the truth, uh, I really like working with mechanical things, vehicles. I'm a car guy. I like, um, you know, as a kid, I like, you know, building stuff and whether it's Legos or trains or whatever it was. So the PRT is like it's the, uh, a bigger version of that, so I think that's pretty neat. And basically as a kid, uh, I was told, well, if you want to do that stuff, become an engineer, and then you can do do what you like. So that's sort of the way I, the way I went. PRT's open to the public, right? So it might cost you 50 cents. You might have to bring some quarters and put in the, in the gate to get on. But yeah, the PRT's for everyone. It's a, it's a community transit system that uh, anyone can ride at any time that we're open. I think it really connects the community, right? So it connects downtown to the hospital. That's uh, over four miles away. It also alleviates a lot of traffic congestion, right? So one of the reasons the PRT was originally built was in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Morgantown was growing rapidly and there was a lot of traffic on the roadways. And the only way students could be transported during that time was by bus. So that became very inefficient. So they looked for another way to get students to be able to move around campus. So the PRT was introduced. So it, if you think about it, if we give 12,000 rods a day, that's 12,000 cars that we're taking off of the highway. See you later, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Wow, that was a blast. I learned so much from our awesome tour around the PRT facilities, and it really makes me appreciate the PRT even more. Next, we're gonna be traveling to a different part of campus. We're headed over to the health sciences area of campus to tour a state-of-the-art medical training facility. We are headed to the West Virginia Simulation Training and Education for Patient Safety Center, otherwise known as STEPS. I gotta admit, I'm not a health sciences student, so I've never been to this facility before. So it's gonna be an adventure for me and for you. And we're gonna learn all about patient safety and what these folks are doing to ensure that every time you go to the doctors, you are accurately cared for. Let's go see what they have to say. Welcome to the WVU Health Science Center. My name is Brian Manier. I'm a simulation technician here at the STEPS unit in the Health Science Center. Our main mission and goal is to help train medical students and nursing students and anyone wanting to pursue a career in the uh, health sciences. That would be doctors, nurses, physical therapists that uh, help people with sports injuries or occupational therapists that help people get better with their um, arms and legs with uh, movement and grips, things like that. The room that we're in right now is called our Clinical Skills Practice Lab. This is where students come to practice their hands-on skills on mannequins that are fake people and they learn everything that they need to do to 
do their job. This is one of our mannequins that the nursing students get to use a lot. They practice how to take care of a patient in the bed, in the hospital, everything that they need to do as far as giving the patient a bath or giving them medication or doing any procedures that they need to do like taking care of any uh, infections or wounds or drawing blood or giving them medications uh, through a shot. The fun fact about this mannequin is that students can take an actual blood pressure on the arm of this mannequin and also each mannequin is connected to its own tablet where we can control the heartbeat, the blood pressure, and how well the patient is breathing. If any of you have ever been to the doctor's office at one of our WVU uh, clinics, you've probably seen a room like this. This is where the medical students learning how to be doctors or nursing students practice how to take care of a patient in one of our exam rooms. Sometimes we will use real people in here for the students to practice with and those people are called uh, standardized patients and it gives them an opportunity to interact and practice with a real life person for very good training. This is our computer lab where students can come in, work on a computer to listen to different sounds that the body makes and learn how those sounds determine what they need to do for the patient. All of these little pads right here simulate different uh, like heart sounds or lung sounds that the students can learn from. They can also observe their classmates in practice scenarios and then give them feedback. This room is called our mother-child suite. This is where nurses and doctors and people wanting to learn how to deliver babies come to practice how to deliver the baby. This mannequin we can actually put a small baby mannequin in her stomach and she will actually deliver the baby. And with a computer, we can control how fast or how slow it, or how long it takes her to deliver and if anything goes wrong and we can make the baby come out. Once the baby is delivered, they use a different mannequin to practice what they need to do as soon as a baby is born. This mannequin here is called Tori and she represents a, a newborn or an infant. The doctors and nurses will practice what they need to do within the first couple of minutes to take care of the baby. This baby, as you can see, moves just like a real baby. It can cry and gives them a very good experience of learning how to take care of babies. In this room, this is where students practice their what's called physical assessment where they learn if you've ever been to the doctor's office and they had to look in your ear or look in your throat, this is where they learned how to do that. With models like this, they can look inside the ear and see what they would really see looking in your ear. This is our anatomage table where students can come to learn what's called anatomy and physiology of the body. What that means is they can look and see where organs are in the exact location in the body. So they can look and see where lungs are, see what they really look like, see where your heart, your brain, your stomach, everything is inside the body. This might look a little scary, but this is what doctors need to look at and nurses too, to learn where different parts are in the body. And with the software in here, they can move away or see as much of the body as they want. So this part, you can see his, the skeleton with his head, his ribs, his arms, hips, and all the bones in the leg. And also a little bit of the circulatory system, which is what your blood flows through when your heart pumps it out. This room is where doctors that are learning how to be surgeons and operate on people come to learn how to use a robotic surgery instrument, they have to use this to be able to operate the robot. They look through the screen here and they would see the arms of the robot moving and they have to learn how to use their hands and their feet at the same time to move all the arms of the robot. There's different uh, skills in here that they have to learn that almost look like computer games and the better that they get at the game, the harder it gets. 
and eventually they take a test on it to see how well they can use the robot to know if they're ready to use that robot to operate on someone. This mannequin we call Petey. We use him when doctors are learning how to take care of uh, little boys and girls. And as you can see, he will blink his eyes and he will also follow us around the room as we're checking on him to make sure that he's okay. And just like a real person, if we would fill his arm here, we would feel a, a pulse, which means that his heart is beating. If we put a stethoscope on his chest, we could hear his heart beat. We could hear him breathing through his lungs. We could listen to his stomach to see if anything's wrong in his belly. And also on his feet, we could check for pulses. He's pretty cool. And he's one of our favorite ones to use here. This area back here is what we call the control room. We sit back here at a computer and we can see the students through the mirror, but they can't see us. And we watch them, like I said, to observe how they're doing. And we use the software on this computer to control all the functions of Petey and other mannequins, depending on whichever one we have in the room. So that concluded our tour of all of our rooms at uh, Steps. Hopefully some of you are now interested in either being doctors or nurses or going into the healthcare profession, because if you do, you get to see all the fun toys and equipment that you'll get to work with to help you learn. So since we saw all those rooms, we wanted to spend a little time with a special guest here, Petey. So Petey, what's your favorite part about living here at Steps? Working with you, Brian. Well, thank you, Petey. I like working with you too. Every time I get to work with you, it's a lot of fun. How old are you, Petey? I'm 10 years old. Well, that's really cool. Um, what's your favorite thing to eat? Pasta. That's awesome. I love pasta too. What is your uh, favorite thing to help the students learn here at the STEPS unit? So whenever you're sick, they can practice with you to learn how to help other boys and girls? Yeah, and they make me feel real better. And they take really good care of you, don't they? Yes, they do. This is the best health care in town. That's right. WVU is one of the top 100 hospitals in the country almost every single year. Well, as you've seen today, boys and girls, there's a lot of stuff that we get to do here at the STEPS unit. My favorite thing about my job, and I love coming to work every single day, my favorite thing is helping all of the future doctors and nurses learn how to take better care of you because everybody someday might need a doctor. And this is where they start to learn how to do what they need to do to make you better and fix any problem that you have. Hi, my name is Ruby Carter. I'm a nursing student here at WVU. I'm a junior this year, and I'm from the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia. So as a nursing student in the STEPS lab, there are many opportunities for us to learn. So we actually get to go into the hospital and practice on real patients and treat and help other patients in the hospital. Um, before we go into the hospital, we actually learn all our skills here in the STEP Center. So there's many devices and materials that we get to use to practice and learn before actually stepping foot into the hospital. My favorite part about the STEPS lab would be the mannequins we use because they're very lifelike and they give us great scenarios to practice for real life patients. We get to do simulations like running a code or we even had a birthing simulation one time where we actually got to see a mannequin birth another mannequin and that was very helpful for when we were able to go into the hospital and see that in actual real life. We do learn a lot here with the mannequins. They do a lot of things as you guys have seen with Brian and it's a great way for us to learn. To have the STEP Center here at WVU is great for our state because it allows more nursing students and medical students to come in and be able to learn and practice to go into the real world. In West Virginia, we have a nursing shortage and we are always looking for new nurses 
um, to come into the field at the hospital. So this is a great way for us to learn and get excited about treating patients in the real world. If you're thinking about going into the medical field as being a doctor or a nurse, it's a great opportunity to be able to interact with people and help people and treat them. As a WVU student, I recommend coming here because you learn so much and we have such a great facility with the STEP Center. There is a lot of technology that we use that gives us real life scenarios of being in the hospital. And we also get to practice at Ruby Memorial and treat real patients on several different floors, which is also very helpful in our nursing and doctor practice. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a great visit to our step center and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Wow, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I need to go back to school again to learn to be a nurse just so I can spend some time in that training facility. We are actually going to wrap up this episode with a visit to a very, very special place on campus. Do we have any sports fans in the audience of Energy Express today? Perfect. We are headed behind the scenes at the WVU baseball field and we might get to meet with some players too. Let's head over there now. What's up guys, Braden Berry here, center fielder for the West Virginia baseball team. Uh, I'm gonna do an interview with you all and show you all around the facility today. I mean, I've been playing since as young as I can remember. I think I started playing t-ball when I was four years old. Um, what got me into it, my parents, you know, they, they grew up baseball fans, playing baseball too. Um, they say when I was a little kid, they would put baseball on the TV and I would like instantly start watching it. Like it, nothing else I would watch, but if they put baseball on, I would start watching it and run around the living room, playing, playing wiffle ball inside the house with my dad. You know, it just started when I was super young. probably playing for the fans, you know, I mean, we, we get such a great crowd at every game and like all the kids love us, they all know who you are and just like playing for that is, a, is really special, so I would say that. It's awesome, I mean, you know, that's always the goal and since it was the first time in program history that we've ever done that, it was super special and I mean, honestly, there's no better group of guys to do it with than the group we had this year. It was, it was awesome. Yep, um, that's something we haven't done since I've been here. That's also another huge goal and it was super, super cool to be able to experience that and hopefully moving forward we can make it farther, but you know, it was still a very, very cool experience. I mean, I'm from Kentucky, so being able to go play that kind of baseball back in my home state was really awesome. and. You know, that's the highest level of competition you get to play all year. So it's, it's great baseball, a lot of fans show out, and I mean, it's, it's what you're playing for, you know. You play the whole season to get to that point. It's awesome. I mean, West Virginia is such a tight community, and we play for all 1.8 million people that live in the state. So it's really cool to see even the kids come out and support us. It's awesome when they know your name and ask you to sign balls for them after the game, so it's really fun. You know, growing up, I'm sure I love baseball, they love baseball. It's awesome for them to come out and see a, I don't know, a college game and be able to support a team like that. I mean, they don't have professional sports here, so it's the highest level that they get to see. So it's pretty cool knowing that, like, we're their role models and that they're looking up to us to try and strive to be like us one day. All right, guys, that wraps up the questions. I'm going to take you on a quick tour around the facility, and we'll get you all out of here. What's up guys, welcome to West Virginia's baseball field. If you want to follow me, I can take you on a quick little tour through our facility and show you how we live every day. If y'all want to follow me, I'll show you our team lounge. This is everyone's favorite place, you know, to hang out before games, before practice, anything. We got our little video game stations with PlayStation, Xbox, many different games. Guys will run ping pong before games, we'll do tournaments and stuff and then Couches where we'll watch TV or even plug the Xbox in over here and play some games. But yeah, kind of just a nice little place to hang out before we get ready to go play on the field. All right, guys, this is the team theater. We'll do uh, team meetings. We'll do, we'll watch the other team's pitchers before games. We'll kind of just, this is just a nice little meeting room. Coaches will call meetings, have individual meetings in here and uh, 
kind of a nice place for the team to gather as a whole and you know talk about anything that we need to discuss before a game or practice. Next stop, our weight room. This is our weight room, brand new, all the best equipment. Great place to get better, you know, get stronger. Our great strength coach Kelly in there. But yeah, we got everything in here, you know, to get stronger and stay healthy for a long season. So I thought I'd tell you all a little bit about the Black Bears. Um, I'm actually playing for the Black Bears this summer. Um, so what they are, it's basically a summer collegiate baseball team that is in the uh, PBR Draft League. So basically a bunch of college guys from all over the place will come together and play for the Black Bears. So it's like a, basically kind of like an all-star team and uh, best competition around for summer collegiate baseball and uh, super fun getting to play here at the Mon still for all you guys. Next up, we got the meal room. So this is where they'll have our pregame meal set out. We'll uh, all come up here as a team and you know eat our Chipotle before our games and you know just get ready, kind of just chill out before the game. Also got a great view of the field from up here too. All right, guys, if you want to follow me in here, we got everyone's favorite place in the field, the locker room, and we got my locker over here. It's all empty now, but this is where. This is where my locker was at for this season. The locker room, you know, is where we get ready for games. We change in here. We uh, have little player meetings, you know, just hang out with anyone who's here. Um, great place to build team chemistry and just hang out before games. And if you look right here, we got my favorite uniform, the all whites. For all those that are wondering, no, we don't keep these looking this fresh. We got a nice equipment manager who keeps them clean and gets all the stains out for us. So me or my mom don't have to do it anymore. There's me right there. All right, guys, here it is. Welcome to our field, Mon County Ballpark. Best place to play college baseball. So this is the home bullpen. This is where all of our starting pitching and relievers get ready to come in the game. Also, back there, we got our mud room where we keep our cleats. We got a little cubby for each of our players so our locker room doesn't get all smelly. All right, guys, like I said, I'm the center fielder. We're out here in center field. You know, this is where I play every game and uh, best position on the field, if you ask me. Definitely got the best view out here. You can see the whole field. Welcome down to the dugout. You know, this is where we uh, watch the game from, hang out. You know, it's a great place for the team to, you know, cheer on all the guys out on the field and uh, it's a good place to be for the game. All right, guys, here we are at home plate. This is where all the magic happens, you know. Hopefully I can see y'all out here next year at some games. Swing, bada bada, swing! Oh my goodness, I can't believe we got to take that back lot tour of the WVU baseball field. That was so exciting. But that wraps us up here in Morgantown, West Virginia for your visit to WVU. I hope you guys had a beautiful time and thank you so much for letting me be your host today. We appreciate you watching WVU Energy Express on West Virginia Public Broadcasting and on YouTube. So long y'all and let's go Mountaineers!